this video, we'll be showcasing our Immerse Virtual Studio Signature Edition, which now includes the ability to listen to Apple Music's spatial rendering. We'll be digging into a 714 mix inside of Pro Tools to showcase these new features. Additionally, with this release of Immerse Virtual Studio Signature Edition, our standalone version now supports custom input sources to quickly monitor reference mixes. So we recommend using it as your main way to monitor and reference while working in an immersive format. Let's get started. I'm starting here with an immersive mix comprised of stereo stems and that final master reference mix. I wanna make sure my playback engine is set to Immerse Audio Bridge. In our IO page, we wanna make sure we're set up with a 714 output. You can see right here, mine is named Main 714 Output. I'm currently working with the Dolby Atmos integration inside of Pro Tools. So I have my monitor path set up as 714 output as well. In my Dolby Atmos renderer, I'm gonna go up to the monitoring tab and make sure I'm outputting that 714 output. I'm gonna test my mix here to make sure that I'm outputting those 714 channels. So I can see right there on my mixer, it's not folding down anywhere. I'm outputting full 714, ready for a speaker-based playback. Next, I'm gonna open up my Immerse Virtual Studio Signature Edition standalone software and make sure my routing is correct. I'm using my AirPod Maxes as my playback engine, my final listening position. So I'm gonna to go to my audio settings. My input is going to be that Immerse Audio Bridge connecting to the output of Pro Tools. And then the output of Signature Edition is going to be my AirPod Maxes. For channel configuration, I'm going to make sure I'm set up in 714 SMPTE format, which is the output of that Dolby Atmos renderer, and I'm going to select my Apple Music Studio. With those selected, I can hit play and start listening. With Apple Music Studio selected, we can see that Apple Generic HRTF is our HRTF at the moment. Our Immerse personalized HRTF is bypassed when we're using Apple Music Studio. We're utilizing Apple's ecosystem. So if you have your Apple personalized HRTF set up already, and you're using compatible headsets like these AirPod Maxes and a correct OS version, then you'll be able to listen to that Apple personalized HRTF as well. But it's the Apple generic HRTF that's the default right now. If you wanna find out a little bit more about if your system can operate with that personalized HRTF, check out the link on the screen. Apple head tracking works much the same as their personalized HRTF. If you're working on a compatible system with a compatible device, you'll have the ability to check our head tracking option right here. As I'm listening to Apple Music Studio, I'm able to switch between my three current Signature Edition studios right now. So I can take a listen, switch over to Lurson Mastering. We can see a few things change. One, I have the ability to change my HRTF intensity, and we can see that Immerse Personalized HRTF is now active. Switching back to Apple Music, I can see we're set back to that Apple Generic HRTF. When I'm listening to Lurson Mastering or Alan Meyerson's studio, I'm listening to a speaker-based playback through these virtual spaces. When I'm listening to Apple Music Studio, that's Apple's spatial rendering binaural process. When working in Dolby Atmos, we generally wanna be monitoring at least two additional sources. The first one being the original stereo mix, the second being Dolby Atmos's binaural version. To make this easier, without any complex routing, we've added the ability to route custom input sources into Immerse. That way you can toggle between three separate sources depending on what you wanna to listen to. Let's get this set up in our Pro Tools project. Highlighted here, I have an additional stereo mix that came with my stems for this session. The internal integration of Dolby Atmos also allows me to listen to their Dolby binaural output as an option. We can see that highlighted here as headphones. In my IO page, I've created two separate stereo outputs. We can see one named Dolby Bin for binaural, second being Stereo Ref. That's where that stereo reference mix is gonna be. I have those routed to two specific outputs here, 17 and 18 for that Dolby binaural output, 19 and 20 for that stereo reference. Now that those are routing into Immerse Audio Bridge, I wanna make sure I select the appropriate additional monitoring sources here in source B and source C. For source B, I choose input 17 and 18. 
and that's gonna connect to my Pro Tools output that I selected as that Dolby Atmos binaural render. For source C, I'm gonna choose 19 and 20. So I'm, source C is going to be my stereo mix. I've named source B and source C the same thing here in my monitoring sources so we can see Dolby binaural and stereo mix. And now when I hit play, I can toggle between the three. So right now I'm listening to Apple Music Studio through Immerse Virtual Studio. I can toggle to the Dolby Binaural Mix. I can also toggle to the original stereo mix. Additionally, if I move over to Lurson's room, I'm now listening to the speaker-based mix through a virtual room, through a virtual space. Knowing that there's some gain difference, particularly with the stereo reference mix, we have the ability to adjust some sliders so we can gain match right here in the plugin. With Apple Music spatial rendering and these additional monitoring sources, any mixer now has the ability to listen exactly how the consumer is going to listen, whether that's via Apple Music, via Amazon Music or Tidal, or over speakers on an AV system. Not only can we listen to every way the consumer can potentially listen, but having the ability to monitor our stereo mix as well allows us to maintain creative intent throughout all of the specific formats. Happy mixing.